Are you looking for a cheap air cooling case that also looks good? This might be your best option. The very popular NZXT H510 Flow and H510 finally have a new predecessor? No, no, not predecessor, replacement, successor. That's the word I'm looking for. And I mean, looking at it just from a design standpoint, it feels like a worthy successor, especially with that added um, direct airflow GPU fan down here at the bottom. There's a 120 millimeter fan, which you're probably seeing here. Let's be honest, the H510 seriously needed a redesign. I mean, I can't even tell you how many people called it the hot box, the death box, you name it, whatever. There was just a lot that needed to be fixed. But this is now part of a brand new family that NZXT announced with the H5 Flow and the H5 Elite, which the H5 Elite review will come later. Now the focus for this bad boy is all on airflow. I mean, there is a great diagram on their website that shows just all the places you can pull air. You can pull air from down here, you pull air from up here, you pull air from the back, you pull air, sorry, you exhaust air from the back, you pull air from all sorts of places, including this really cool uh, fan that is located at the bottom. Not only is it about premium airflow, this is made from a system integrator, somebody who builds a ton of PCs for a ton of people. So build experience and ease of build experience is very, very important to them. Lastly, price, $94.99. Very, very good price for a mid-tower case. Oh, and by the way, it also comes with a two-year warranty. Okay, so let's let's talk about the outside of the case. Like, how, how big is it? Well, first and foremost, guys, it's a mid-tower case. So it's 446 millimeters long, or 17.55 inches. It's 227 millimeters wide, or about 8.93 inches, and 464 millimeters tall, or about 18.2 inches. It's 7.01 kilograms, or 15 0.45 pounds. For front IO, you've got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, you've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C, and then you've got a combo headset audio jack as well. For your motherboard support, when you think about on the inside of the case, which you're, you're looking at right here, you can support up to EATX, specifically though, up to 272 millimeters is the limit. Now, here's the deal. This bar right here, uh, which you're seeing, this, this creates quite a bit of limits. And so if you think about just like a standard board, like I'm not even talking like a godlike, like an MSI Ace is like 277 millimeters. So I just, I don't recommend an EATX board inside of this case. Even though it says it is EATX, I would say ATX and lower uh, is gonna be your safer bet. This does support air coolers. In fact, you can see right here, uh, we've got that beautiful T120 up to 165 millimeters. So you're like mid-size single tower or dual tower size coolers. Like for instance, the, the uh, the, the uh, AK600 from Deepcool. Those are gonna be totally fine. Let's also talk about your GPU clearance. You actually have up to 365 millimeters in length. So as you can see, it's most long cables. We've got the 3090 Ti sitting there with lots of room. Obviously you have to think about with a front radiator, um, you are gonna lose a little bit of space, but for the most part, any one of your bigger GPUs is gonna fit in here without much of an issue. Because of that added fan up at the front, they got rid of the drive tray. So this isn't gonna be like your NAS build. Because of that, you've got room for a single two and a half inch uh, SSD or a three and a half inch HDD uh, and that's about it. For fans you can do two 140 millimeter or two 120 millimeter in the front. You can do two 120 millimeter in the top. You got a one 120 millimeter in the back and you've got that 120 millimeter airflow fan at the bottom for the GPU. Now it does come with two F120Q fans. Um, that's not enough to really cool the case. Uh, and by the way all of those are actually replaceable so you can put whatever you want in there if you wanted to. For radiators you can do a 280 millimeter AIO in the front, uh, you can do up to a 240 millimeter AIO in the top, and then you can do a 120 millimeter AIO in the back if you wanted to. Let's check out a montage of the build, of course featuring that new T120 cooler. If you want to check out a review of that T120, which was super surprising in terms of how good it is, you can check that out actually right here. But outside of that, let's see what the build looks like inside of the case that has more RGB and stuff, and enjoy.
what can I say about this case? I mean, I have now built in it three times. It's super easy to build and it pairs exceptionally well with the N7 motherboards from NZXT. I have a ton of issues with that motherboard um, just in terms of its support for RGB, etc. But for the build experience side, it's pretty exceptional. Now I will say this, if you can find a MOBO with like a side USB 3.2, that ends up being ideal for this case because these little this little bar right here that they have is just high enough off of the MOBO to be able to connect it in and it just looks super clean uh, that way. They did include a fully combined front panel connector, so now you don't have all of the individual ones. I've seen this on a lot of new cases, not just from NZXT, but Fractal and Fantex. In the rear, you actually have ample cable management room, just really great strategic placement of your tie downs. Uh, your Velcros are very easy to use. Uh, all in all, uh, the front area, even though it's got the GPU fan location, it's easy to be able to really nicely put together your uh, power cables, especially if you were ATX 3.0 or, or a 4000 series, which you can see from a GPU standpoint fits in here without any issues whatsoever. I do love that you can now top mount a 240 millimeter AIO, though with a dedicated GPU fan, you know, it's not as big of a deal now to front mount a 280 millimeter radiator. Before you usually wouldn't front mount a radiator because you're gonna starve the GPU. I think the addition of that fan actually fixes that problem. One thing, if you are gonna top mount, uh, just it's worth noting that you will need to plug in your EPS CPU connectors before top mounting your AIO because you're not, it's gonna be really hard unless you have small hands, which I don't in my sausage fingers. Uh, it makes a little, uh, it makes a little, uh, makes it a little hard to do that afterwards. This still does have the ability and you can see the screws here to actually remove this and install everything separately and put it back in like the old H510. But the best thing is, is that you can also on both the H5 Elite and on the H5 Flow, remove this front. It just gives you better options for cable managing in the front. Now, if you guys wanna see the whole build and see the whole process for that, you can actually check out the full live build of that right here. Okay, so let's talk about the H5 Flow and how it performs. Now, first and foremost, for the config that we actually used, we used an Intel Core i5-13600K. We used the NZXT T120 RGB Black with two fans, so we added a second F120Q fan. Uh, we got the NZXT N7 Z690 motherboard. Again, just wanted to make sure that it paired well together. It's a different motherboard than what you're seeing uh, via this stuff, but in the B-roll, you'll see what we actually used. Uh, for our GPU, we used the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti FE. For memory, we used the Team T-Force Delta RGB 4x8 configuration at 3200 megahertz of DDR4, so you got 32 gigs of there. We've got a one terabyte SN770 uh, Western Digital Black NVMe SSD. We've got Be Quiet Silent Wing 3 fans, so two 140s. We used uh, the NZXT C1080 Plus Gold PSU, and then we used Asia Horse cable extensions. They're black and gray, just to go with the whole kind of smoked out theme with just that little bit of RGB. The temps that were cooling. When you're doing a 13600K, you do set things for air cooling. Now, the, what this does is this minimizes the runway for boosting and your volt keeps your voltages in check. So if you were setting to AIO cooling, your temps with this T120 cooler will be significantly hotter and they don't need to be for gaming, etc. So let's talk about it. For CPU, when we were basically under idle, we saw 35 in the open case and then we saw 36 in the close case. So nice close top, te uh, close top temps. Now, for these under load cases, again, you have to make sure you set that settings. You're looking at 79 under load in the open case and 82 in the closed case. My thoughts on the CPU temps, super nice tight numbers between open and closed case. Obviously for air cooling using nice fans like the Be Quiet Silent Wind 3s that we're using are, is a good idea. If you think about RGB, I will say the new F120Q RGBs from NZXT aren't bad. And then also the Lee and Lee Uni 120s, the brand new ones they just announced are also great RGB options. Okay, so let's talk about GP you then at open case and idle we're looking at 35 and then closed case we actually saw 30 which that is that fan doing its job which is actually pretty awesome uh, when we talk about under load we saw 70 in the open case and then close case we saw 71. obviously that fan making a difference in gpu that's really cool to see i think it's such a smart design so what are my what are my closing thoughts ruby what do you think this is a great case for the price I love the thought and engineering when it came to the whole thing, right? Like everything from the build experience, how easy it is to cable management. Um, you know, it's just a very clean looking case. Again, it's got that very NZXT feel. They tried to keep the cost down and some of that is just in the materials that are obviously being made. Lighter aluminum than what you're used to on some of the, you know, something a little bit more expensive. Though with the right parts, this can be an exceptionally performing airflow case. It is very much a worthy successor to the NZXT H510 series, and it was much, much needed, and I feel like they did a very good job 
of making everything that made that case great, but outdated just so much better and in line with modern uh, hardware and modern hardware PC needs. That's what I think. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, so did you like the H5 Flow? Was there stuff that you saw that you were surprised about? Did you know about that, that lower GPU fan? And what are your thoughts on the lower GPU fan? Do you feel like there's gonna be enough GPUs that that might potentially end up being an issue? I'd love to know all that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, see that? See that like and subscribe button? If you could just, if you could just nudge it, that would be awesome. Number, number one, you won't miss awesome videos like this, especially if you ring that notification bell that is right next to it, because then at that point in time, you'll get notified every time we post a new video like this. <clears throat> do you like the fact you want to see more builds like this, but you, do, you want the, un, the unfiltered version? Then you should check out Roby Tech Live, our larger YouTube channel, uh, basically where we build in these cases usually first, and then they become reviews later on. It's a great opportunity to just see uh, unfiltered what it's like to build, see the entire process from beginning to end, and it, it's just an easier way for you to get an idea and talk real time with me about whether the uh, what what questions you might have about the case. If you have questions about this or want a further discussion, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash robitech. Literally tens of thousands of people who love to talk about this stuff all the time, so if you have questions, want to talk about builds, all that sort of stuff, great place to hang out and actually learn about PCs. Lastly, you should, you know, we talked about the, that awesome Instagram story on this where we showed the T120 and showed how quiet it was, uh, just like this on TikTok, or maybe just a fire looking build inside of it like we did with the H5 Elite uh, over on Instagram right there. It's at Robitech, absolutely everywhere. Uh, you should come join us. Anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.